burned it off and just for like four holes i was just praying just walking through the woods i was which, still throwing which if you don't know zach that's a tough thing to just sit in silence you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my brain doesn't get quiet very easily <laughs> you have joy 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 down in your heart <laughs> share it with other people yeah. um I am a challenger. <laughs> I can see that. I, yeah. see that. I, took, the, I took the test and uh, got my result. Yeah, so I went to see Shane yesterday at the hospital. Okay. And um, something, I was leaving the office and something told me to grab this Bible. Like, I, honestly, I was just taking his appointment award up to him, mm. checking on him because yeah. I knew he was supposed to have another procedure yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, or two days ago. And so I, uh, someone said, grab your Bible. It's like, I have no need for it, but I'll carry it, I guess. Um, so I get it and I get out of the car and I'm walking across the parking lot and I hear, hey! Look around. He's like, you a pastor? <laughs> it's like, well, I'm at a hospital. Oh, so it's like, you know, you know what? You know, in my mind, I was just, if I'm being honest, I was like, I really want to be able to say no at the moment because, like, <laughs> It was like 3.30 in the afternoon. I had to get my kid by 5. Mm. Like, I'm in a different city. And it was like, I, I really just wanted to get in, to check on him, yeah. give him his award, and get over and pick up Ari, uh, my kid. And uh, I was like, yeah, I am. <laughs> and so I walk over. He says, hey, will you hang out with me while I finish my cigarette and then pray for me? First off, cigarettes not even lit yet. It's just he's just holding the cigarette. Yeah, I'm about to light it. Yeah. I need you to hang out with me before I light this thing. I was like, so. um, sure, <laughs> I guess. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so I was staying there, and we get to talking. Um, funny story. So two guys from Point Man pull up mm. while I'm standing there with this guy smoking a cigarette, and one of them goes, "Is that Zach down there smoking a cigarette?" I wasn't smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> the other guy goes. It is him. <laughs> so they start yelling too from across the parking lot. That's a whole thing in the middle of the front of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I get talking to this guy and I was like, so what are you here for? You know, I got time because i um, smoking. I'm smoking a full cigarette, yeah. Um, and so I was like, what are you here for? And he goes, well, I'm here to, uh, my mom passed away. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And he goes, I'm here to identify the body. Oh, gosh. I was like, jeez. Okay. Well, this is an interesting conversation. He goes into the whole deal. His mom doesn't know the Lord, unfortunately, as far as he knew. And uh, so he's a little sad about that piece of it, that she didn't know the Lord. He, he said, I knew it was common that she was going. She's got some issues, and, and it was just really only a matter of time before she passed. And um, he has a cross necklace on. And so I asked him, I was like, so what's your relationship what does that mean to you is actually what I said. Yeah. Um, you know, is it jewelry? Does it actually have any meaning for you? <laughs> and uh, he goes, yeah, I know the Lord. He's like, Jesus, he died for me. He said, I, I screwed up. He saved me. He said, yeah. and the smile starts to come on his face, yeah. just visible smile. And then we get to talking a little bit more. And he's like, and I really love worship music. And I love to sing. And he smiled big on his face. And I was like, man, this is an example of how your faith can dictate your joy mm. and how it can strengthen your joy from the rest of the conversation we're having you know this started off with this guy who's pretty distraught because he's there to identify his mom's body mm. we walk we he finishes a cigarette we walk to the hospital door and he's just smiling talking the whole time about you know his faith his love worship music even his love for his mom um He's still sad, obviously, because if she didn't know the Lord, then there's a, a negative consequence to that eternally uh, for both of them. But he had joy and he was smiling and talking because he, you know, it was like God had done a work in him just thinking about him and thinking about his love of worship music and all of these things. It just changed the entire perspective. But it all started because I grabbed this Bible. Because there'd be no other reason for him to just yell at me. Hey, you a pastor. Yeah, Yeah. hey, are you a pastor? Yeah. If I wasn't carrying the Bible, I'd just look like another dude wearing yeah. jeans up to the hospital. Yeah, like, but I think it's also good, too. It kind of shows your joy in the moment where it's like you might not have been happy to do it. But, you know, you had that joy from coming and 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 doing it and going and saying yes i am a pastor and going up to him and, and you know and that conversation with him when he probably needed it the most i wouldn't say that i was like frustrated that i had to do it that wasn't what i meant yeah. it was just like in my mind i had a thing i was doing i was there for yeah. a reason right, right. and then like 
you know, whenever that question comes up, it could have gone a billion different ways. No it it could have gone yeah, from no "Will you pray for me?" to "You fool," or yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. could have gone a million ways. And so, especially in where this hospital is, it's kind of a wild place in the <laughs> parking lot. Um, and so, I was kind of just like, "I'm oh, hand. What am I about to get into?" Um, but I, I, I fully believe it was a time. It actually, as it turns out, that guy had visited the church um, a couple of weeks ago, and I had communicated over text back and forth with him. Oh my gosh! And it was just a complete just random connection when I was walking up that it wow. was just happened to be that guy. Like, cause he said something about worship here and mm. it hit me. I was like, did you text the church? And he was like, yeah, I was like, you were talking to me. Like, that's nuts, man. That's crazy. <laughs> so it was just a, a whole thing. And it, I, I honestly, I was really kind of struggling through um, setting up the message. Cause I've been thinking for tonight for mm. point, man, cause I've been thinking a lot about our entire series was unbelief and it was building faith in different seasons of life is mm. essentially. But when I got to joy, joy really comes from our faith. And when I mean, say that, I mean, we, we have joy that we can have in our life. We can choose joy without a relationship with Jesus. We have an amount that we can obtain but um, whoop, I'm throwing paper now. Um, whenever you start to look at having faith, uh, John fifteen eleven, it says, "These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full." There's a fusion that occurs where we have an amount we can create, but there's the fullness of that joy comes from the pouring out from from God and from a relationship with Jesus. And so, I was really struggling with. Is this a conversation about building faith in a season of joy, or is this a conversation about what is joy and where does the fullness of that come from? And really, what we this message has turned into is that it's that we our fullness of joy and being able to be joyful in like this situation where this guy's mom has passed away and he's there to identify her. Um, that has been transformed because of this relationship with God. Joy is a choice. Happiness is a response we have when something goes well or when your kid comes and gives you a hug and you're happy about in that moment. That's a response to a stimulus. So something has happened. We're happy about that thing happening. Joy is something that we choose. We choose to be joyful. We choose to be joyful when things are going well. We choose to be joyful when we're sad. But we have to choose it. And we can only exude or show so much joy without it being full fulfilled by god yeah there's a ton of times in my life where i've looked back and it's it seems seems like counterintuitive to say like joy and peace are sep or joy and happiness are are different from each other but they 100 percent are they definitely are 100 percent are and i think that's something i've had to learn uh over the past few years where it's like man i'm just i'm not happy today but it doesn't mean you don't have, you don't have joy in your heart right. because yeah, you might not be happy, in which it's, happiness is a fleeting feeling. It, it comes and goes, like you were yeah. saying, and it's not a something that. It kind of uh, it kind of reminds me of like a little bit about like how to fight depression. Is like you might not be happy, sure, and that you could cause depression, but you have that joy in your heart, so depression's not going to win. You're not going to be mm -hmm. able to have that. And like you were saying earlier, it comes from the Holy Spirit. It it really does. Um, I have a verse for that. I'll pull it up in a minute. That's on my notes, but you know it says that. The love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, yeah, gentleness, self-control. Uh, Galatians 5.22. Oh, you got it already. So, but it <laughs> says that the Holy Spirit produces these things. And so, yes, like you're saying, you have your own level of joy, but you have the Holy Spirit's joy, and you have the fruit of the Spirit, and that takes it to a whole other level where it's tough to do on your own. Yeah, I like this quote uh, by Wayne Jacobson. It said, the fruit of the Spirit is not what we can make ourselves. The fruit of the Spirit is not what we can make ourselves do for a moment, but what God can make us to be for a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, and uh, a person who has happiness, you say this person is very happy all the time, but like in, in, inside they have joy in their heart because that's what exudes when it comes out. It's, it looks like happiness, but in reality, if they're always happy, they're their own drugs. <laughs> or... They have the joy down in their heart, which is, is awesome. I got the joy, 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 joy down in yeah. my heart. Um, yeah, that's like the the comedians. Mm. 
who make people happy mm. all the time, but they they themselves struggle. That's something I was thinking about this week too. Um, getting prepared for this uh, this message that we're bringing right now is like people who seem the most happy all the time. It seems like those are the people who are, or like you're saying, make me making people happy all the time. Is people who are like really deep, dark, depressed, and sad, and mm-hmm. people who you think like stereotypical, like man, they just seem like rough. Like you talk to them, they're like I'm I'm not too bad, you know, I'm okay, and you're like. It seems, you know, it seems opposite of what actually is reality, but it seems to be the case a lot. Yeah, I, I, and I think it goes back to that decision to, to choose joy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of these conversations in the series Unbelief has mm-hmm. really been around what can you create on your own? Where's that limitation? Where does God have to come to fill that, that difference? Um, when we're talking about abundance, for instance. We can only create so much abundance. We only have so much that we can control. And then God has to fulfill the difference. Um, Joy is the same way. We can only have so much. God created us with so much joy. But as the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. No. It's given by God in the end. Yeah, um, it's a very, uh, I think it's something that you can say, well, how do I have joy and how do I have joy all the time? And that's something you, if you don't have those things, maybe it's, it's possible, maybe you're listening to this and you're, you're not saved. Um, you haven't asked Jesus to come into your heart, have, have the Holy Spirit fill you up. So I would, I would challenge you to, if you've never had that conversation with God, to ask him to come into your life and fill you with the Holy Spirit. I would, I would definitely do that and do it now yeah. um, in this moment because um, you're going you're to have so many chances in your life to be able to do that. So go ahead and do it now and then ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And that's where your joy is going to come from a lot of the times. Yeah, and yeah. that's not to say that once you receive God, receive Jesus yep. as your Lord and Savior, that you do not go through trying times. Because oh, yeah, no you doubt. definitely do. Yep. But... In fact, I can make an argument you might go through tougher times once you do. But it's, it, there's a, an impact that, that it has on you. You're not alone. You're always in community with God. Yep. Um, you have the fruits of the Spirit poured out into you. You have the ability to, to find joy in all things. Um, Romans eight twenty eight, and we know that in all things... Work God works together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So that means in the good and the bad times, everything is working together yeah. for his good. A um, couple of keys on building joy or having joy, even as, okay. a, belie- as a believer. Yeah, sure. um, one is understanding that God is the source of joy. Mm, yep. Uh, James 1.17, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change we god is a source of joy and since god is never changing there's no variability to god he's been the same yesterday today and forever that source of joy is consistent and constant yeah. There is no no variation in him. Yeah, I was, I was when I was reading, getting ready for this message. I was looking at like spots in the Bible where it says joy, because I was like, you know, trying to get some inspiration, maybe some uh, some verses to get together. There's so many times where I was looking up in the Bible where it talked around Jesus's birth or around Jesus, where it talks about joy. Mm. Um, the angels were filled with joy when they were telling the shepherds that he was coming. Um, John the Baptist leaped in his mother's womb whenever he met Jesus. There's so many times uh, where if you read in the in the Gospels where there's like so much joy around Jesus himself. If you think about that, it makes sense because Jesus says, I am the good news. The good news is the gospel, which good news should make people happy. It's like, hey, I got some good news. And you're like, hey, that's awesome. What, what yeah. do you have for me? And the good news is Jesus. So that's why it's like surrounding so much of Jesus If you, in your life. And you're thinking like, man, there's just nothing happy, nothing great. And you're like, man, have you heard the good news? That's, mm-hmm. that's awesome. It brings you joy. It brings you happiness because... Jesus is the good news. Jesus is your joy. So. No, it's good. Yeah. yeah, the second thing is that you live with the spirit of gratitude. Mm. Uh, 1 Thessalonians five sixteen through 18, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give mm. thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Live with the spirit of gratitude, meaning live every moment of your life in this constant worship, constant conversation with God, pray without ceasing. That does. I mean, you gotta, you gotta go to work. Um, but 
I, I've told the story before where I was going through a big decision and I was out um, playing disc golf actually and I was just walking around I was listening to a podcast and then I just turned it off and just for like four holes I was just praying just walking through the woods I was which, still throwing which if you don't know Zach that's a tough thing to just sit in silence you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my brain doesn't get quiet very easily so for four holes I, I mean I'm still throwing I'm still yeah. walking um, through the woods but that's what I was doing and I was just what how do I make this decision what should I do what it's coming how should I you know please answer this question for me um, and he did by the time I got done he did and it it comes from that constant like that's just an example of yes you have to leave your house yes you have to go to work yes you have to put down you know your Bible at times and, and accomplish a task but that doesn't mean the conversation ends or that we're, we're done praying, we're done seeking God for answers and inspiration for the decisions and the things we have to make, that pours over into that choice of joy. Mm-hmm. Whenever you're in that dark time, when you're struggling through something, when you have a sick loved one, whenever you're going to identify your mom's body, continuing to seek. He, he didn't have to ask me to come over there. No. Either. That's the other part of that. It's yeah he did and he yelled across the parking lot and it was a whole thing which was fine but he didn't have to i mean he could have just walked in the hospital chaplain probably would have met him at the door when he got in he would have talked to him it would have been fine but he was seeking that that connection he was seeking a conversation with someone who cared he was seeking a conversation with god um through i guess someone else but um he was seeking he was constantly trying to live with that spirit of gratitude and it showed whenever he smiled and he started thinking about singing worship music or thinking about his relationship with god it was really a, it's really a pretty incredible thing that we have the opportunity to live that way yeah uh like you're saying he, he could have just easily gone down the rabbit hole or the, gone down the slippery slope that is sadness and despair mm-hmm. um but he's yeah, like you said he sought out and uh he sought you out um, and same thing in your life where you're, you're out there right now and you're like, man, I just don't have any joy in my life. Like, seek it out, you know. Um, do things that bring joy. I mean, it's easier to said than done, but in those moments where you, you could lean into sadness and you can lean into despair, but choose joy instead, you know. Yeah, you see a lot of times, um, like, people will be like, I- I'm just, I need good Christian friends. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, did you go to church? Yeah, yeah. I, I need to get connected to God. Well, did you pray and read your Bible? Mm. Like there's practical steps yep. too of like, sure. and this is a practical step to, to consistently be seeking him and trying to connect with him and, and praying and, and reading and studying because you're speaking to God, God's speaking to you in this exchange. And that only happens if you take the action step right. to, to lean in and, and to begin praying and growing with him. Share joy with others. Mm. Philippians 2, 1 through 2. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. If you have joy, 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 (laughs) joy down in your heart, share it with other people. Um, In that moment of seeing the cross in my mind, I, I didn't think cross, ask, salvation like it was just i was already there because i was in a a position of spiritual influence um i guess and i was there to go and to see someone else who was sick and was struggling and it just it was like bam cross salvation question ask (laughs) you know it wasn't i didn't think through it but i had been seeking god I had been listening. That's why I grabbed the Bible in the first place. I'm standing there with this guy, and he essentially just spoke through me. Mm. It's like, hey, ask this question. Get this response. Have this conversation. I was sharing joy because I had been seeking it from God. Mm. Like, if you are in a position where you are in that relationship with God, you've been filled with that other part of the joy that you can't create, Share that with someone else and give them the opportunity for that same fullness in their joy. He had it because as soon as he started talking, he was happy. Yeah. He was, he was com- comforted in, in who God was and, and what God has done in his life and how his relationship with God is. But you've got to share joy with others too. Yeah, um, I think I said one of my verses I have today as well is just talking about like if someone is happy, 
sing praises with them and mm-hmm. dance with them. Um, and it's it's very easy. Some people out there were like, it's 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 like a their personality trait where like if they're happy, the whole room is kind of like yeah. pumped up and jazzed up. And if they're like depressed, everybody's like, oh my gosh. This is the worst ever, but it's like uh, some people have that like trait ability, and I don't know how to explain it, but it just is like this person is like brings joy to you. So it's in in that moment, it's kind of like try to be that person who there, there's a lady at work who reminds me of this. Every time she walks in, she just exuberates happiness and joy, and that's like you're saying about she always has like gratitude. Like she, she could be going through the worst thing ever. Like she has a terrible thing at work where she's like, you got to go fly all night long, and she's like. It's okay. I'm all right. I was like, I'm happy. My husband's happy. We're uh, we got this and this going. I'm like, how are you so happy all the time? Mm-hmm. And like, you come in this office, you just bring us joy for the the five minutes that you're in there, and you're like, man, I wish I could be like her. You know, that's awesome. Like, she has that like attitude. But if you're if you're pumped up and you're happy, she's gonna pump you up even more. So I think it's kind of a a way to like try to be like that because that, that, that's the person who exudes uh, exuberates joy to me at least. And you know, there's uh, actually, I've been reading um, Seven Frequencies of Communication by Erwin McManus. Uh, It's his newest book, and it it breaks down, um, like, the different communicating types, the seven different types of communicators, and the things that make them strong and weak, and um, there are those people who are, they communicate in a frequency that changes the energy in a room. Um, they're, they're called challengers, essentially. And so they, they challenge to push to the next best level. Mm. Internally, they struggle because there's never a next... Like, the, mm. the next best level never comes because mm. you're always... You reach a pinnacle and you're like, all right, to the next one. Okay. Um, but those are those people. You also know immediately if crap hits the fan, mm. it's game on because mm. their demeanor changes, the way they interact with everybody changes. Yeah. Um, they don't have the ability to just kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go with the flow. Yeah, they're hot. Either high, high, or low, lows. Yeah, and yeah. they change the energy in the room. For sure. Um, I am a challenger. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. I yeah. can see that. I, took the, I took the test and uh, got my result. Yeah, and, you know, go along with that. Uh, Proverbs 17 actually it ranks a discouraging word mm. up there with a crooked and dishonest life mm. and a foolish son, which I find hilarious, a foolish son. Uh, Proverbs 17, 20 through 22, a man of crooked heart does not discover good, and one with a dishonest tongue falls into calamity. He who sires a fool gets himself sorrow, and the father of a fool has no joy. A joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And so it's that, it's like if you have the ability to, to share joy with people around you it goes so far to to having an impact on them in a positive direction whereas if you share a discouraging word or if you have a negative attitude like you say especially if you're one of those people who can change energies like it'll just crush everybody you won't i mean it's just gonna end the entire momentum that a room has yeah having a bad attitude is something that i've struggled with in the past like something will happen i just have terrible terrible attitude and if you go in every situation with a bad attitude it doesn't matter what it's going to be a bad outcome yeah it's not going to be something that's going to be helpful productive that's going to come from it and there's been times where i've gone to work seasons i've gone to work just with a bad attitude and god's like what are you doing like why why are you have why do you have this attitude it's it's not helping it's not going to make things better have have the attitude that you need to have that that christ have because having that good attitude uh, I think they said on there's like a baseball quote where it says like you can't win with a bad attitude. It's mm-hmm. not going to happen. Um, you out there and you're playing baseball and you have just a poor attitude. The the, the bats aren't going to be swinging. You're not going to catch. You're not going to do what you need to be doing. So have the winning winning life is a, has having a good attitude. So no, yeah, it's definitely it's baseball is a great example. Yeah. It's a head game. Yeah, there is a physical aspect, but in reality, it's. Can you hit the ball? Yeah. Can you catch and throw it? Yeah. And it's, but it's very much you're standing there for a long time, nothing's really happening, and then bam, <laughs> standing there for a long time, nothing's happening, bam. Yeah. And that's life. Yeah. I mean, you may go through stretches of life where things are pretty calm, and then yeah. all of a sudden, sickness. Yeah. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Bam, bam, bam. Things just start hitting you. Right. And how do you respond? Do you respond with a mm-hmm. spirit of gratitude and joy because you've rejoiced in the Lord? You mm-hmm. pulled from that strength in the spirit. Or 
are you in a bad spot mm. and you're in a bad attitude and you're having a hard time and you can't find joy and you become depressed and you go down the spiral of trying to figure things out but you're stuck yeah. um, that's really that's part of that choice and that choice to um, choose joy over over depression over sadness yeah. um, in those hard times when they hit you last thing joy is the strength of faith we're going to pull from a, a book no one ever reads from, probably, unless you're reading straight through the Bible. You can probably quote one verse out of it, and it's not this one. Habakkuk. Habakkuk, okay. 3, yeah. 17 okay. through 19. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food. The flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Times are bad. Sounds sad, yeah. Times are bad. <laughs> Nothing, nothing's producing for you. It says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will take joy in the God of my salvation. Hmm. Now, word salvation, we're in the Old Testament, so remember Jesus hasn't died. He hasn't been resurrected. At this point, salvation is not achievable. It's by revelation to them at this point of what they understand and know and their relationship it's with God directly. God. Yep. This God of my salvation is the God who will save me from this darkness, save me from this hardship, save me from the figs not producing, no fruit of the vine, no flock in the fold. God the Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like deers. He makes me tread on, high, on my high places. The strength to overcome the darkness in life, the painful in life, comes from God who will work and move and protect from all things for the good of his will come back at three back at three yeah it's a lot of times in my life where I've, I've gone through those tough patches the the only antidote to those tough spots and those rough moments in my life is, is leaning into god having that prayer life where i'm like god i just need a vent i just need to get all this out um i just need i got i got this bad thing i got the car broke down i got the animal had to go to the the vet, I have, you know, just bad, bad thing after bad thing. And the only, literally the only antidote to that is praying to God and asking him to help and to fulfill you with joy. Because if you, if you don't have that, I don't know how people who, who don't have Christ ever get back on track. Because to me, it seems impossible. And if, you, if you're living the other life where you're like, I don't have anyone to lean on. I don't have anybody to pray to or anybody to speak into my life. It's, it can get dark and lonely, I feel like, really quick. And uh, I'm just grateful and blessed that uh, I do have a God who loves me, and I call on Him, and He and He helps in the times of need. Because if I didn't have that, or you just go to, you just keep spiraling. Yeah, spiral there's deep. a Bring Me the Horizon song mm. uh, called Lost, mm. and it's essentially that. Mm. It, the opening line is maybe I'll be effed up forever. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like he's just submitting to yeah. the fact that right. I'm going to be in this darkness mm. forever, yeah. and he he clearly doesn't have a relationship. In fact, he probably mm. is an ardent opposer of faith but he clearly is struggling in the song and what he's going through and it ends with just being he's lost yeah. I mean the name of the song is lost and it's like I can help you find your way back yeah. if you uh, want to come on um, but I, I want to say this too though um, is the fullness of joy found in the spirit of God a hundred percent it is yep. I'm a firm believer in counseling mm. and therapy. Yeah. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. Mm. I think that they're actually in, both incredibly valuable. It's necessary to have a relationship with God. It's necessary to, to for the fullness of joy to be acquired, to have that relationship with him. But that doesn't mean that times are not going to be hard. You're not going to ha- get lost. You're not going to be yep. struggling. For sure. And counseling and therapy are incredible tools. Oh, yeah. And they're not anti-biblical. Any, I will argue with anybody who thinks that they are. Um, so if you do find yourself in a depressed state, even as a believer, if you're not a believer, seek counseling and help. I recommend a, a biblical counselor, someone who has a faith um, to draw from for that fullness of the answer. But don't neglect that just out of some hard-headedness about faith. Yep. Like It's necessary. Sometimes you just need to talk through it with somebody who may know more or has a clearer mind about the situation than you do. So seek those people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, like you were just talking about the song, uh, Jelly Roll also has a song where he sings about, like, I'm broken, and the only thing to uh, fill me is drinking and smoking, and he's like, I've been drinking and smoking. Yeah, and he, <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's that one. He's talking about, like, you know, I was like, it's just talking about how he's broken, and, like, there's nothing to fill his uh, joy up with, and there's nothing to, he has no redeeming qualities. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's called I'm broken. It's called 
something else I'd have to, to look it up but I was looking up Lost because oh. there's a some, there's a line <laughs> in it that I, I'm trying to think but, of yeah it's, it's well me and JC were talking about it and like man the song is so popular because so many people can relate to the song like yeah it's, it has a catchy tune and everything but people are connecting with him and his in this message of him being broken and there's no hope and there's no joy and it's like it seems kind of like even more depressing when you think about it and look at it like man there's so many people out there who are broken and they have nothing to fill it with and it's just he's selling all these records because people can relate yeah. to that song that's what it's kind of like man that's rough i saw uh or someone sent me a text it was uh Oh, oh! Uh, Jelly Rolls, the Whitney Houston forklift drive operators. <laughs> <laughs> For, forklift what? Forklift drive operators. For, that's fine. <laughs> it's like, yep, and I lost my certification. <laughs> yeah, the end of the song, Law says, I guess there's no remedy. Own worst enemy. I'm so terribly mm-hmm. lost. And that's so, that's so sad yeah. to read that. Um, it's a great song, though. Um <laughs> But it's just so sad that yeah. that's a, a reality. Yeah. You don't have to be lost. You can make that decision to to follow Jesus. You can make that decision in a relationship with him. It is a decision. Yeah. And it's one that you can make. Understand that you screwed up. You need someone to save you. You need Jesus to save you, rather. You believe in him. You believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. And you make that decision to follow him with your life. It's that simple. Amen. So I'll pray you make that decision if you have it and you're watching this video. Yes. So with that, we didn't do an intro. I'm Zach. I'm Luke. That's Luke. This is the Point Man Podcast. Make sure you like and subscribe before you get out of here as we're on a mission to share the Bible and reach as many men as possible, men everywhere for Christ. So we'll see you next week. See you.